हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम बैक टू माय चैनल आली सर के मिस्टी क्लास फॉर ऑल इन टूडेज क्लास आई हैव सिलेक्टेड सम क्वेश्चंस फॉर केमिकल इक्विलिब्रियम एंड आयनिक इक्विलिब्रियम दिस इज वेरी सिंपल क्वेश्चंस रिलेटेड टू नीट एंड एनसीईआरटी एग्जाम्स सो लेट अस ट्राई टू स्टार्ट द टूडेज क्लास क्वेश्चन नंबर 1 इन व्हिच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग इक्विलिब्रियम KC and KP are not equal. So the first question is related to KP and KC, which is which is known as the equilibrium constant for the reversible reactions, reversible chemical equilibrium reactions. In which of the following equilibrium, KC and KP are not equal. So all of you know the relation between KP and KC is KP is equal to KC into RT to the power delta n so when <coughs> delta n is equal to 0 then rt to the power delta n is equal to 1 and only then kp is equal to kc so you have to find out from the above reactions a b c d where delta n is equal to 1 so if you see here in the first reaction 2 no 2 moles of nitric oxide will decompose to form 1 mole of nitrogen and 1 mole of oxygen so here delta n is equal to 2 minus 2 is equal to 0 if you see the second reactions so2 plus no2 we will combine to form SO3 plus NO. Here you see delta N is equal to also 2 minus 2 is equal to 0. And in the third reaction, if you see, here is also delta N is equal to 2 minus 2 is equal to 0. But, but in fourth reaction, reaction D, delta N is equal to 2 minus 1 is equal to 1. So only for the reaction D, delta N is not equal to 0. So now we we'll come back to the questions. Uh, in which of the following equilibrium, KC and KP are not equal? Are not equal. So whatever we have seen here, if KP and KC becomes equal, then delta N must be equal to 0. So if it it is not equal to zero, then KP and KC are not equal. So you see the question number uh, for the question number one, the correct options will be D because in this uh, questions only reaction D the delta N value becomes equal to one. Uh, whether all the three reactions A, B, and C have the delta n value is equal to 0. So for the three reactions A, B and C, KP and KC is equal to KP and KC, uh, KP is equal to KC. But for reaction D, KP and KC are not equal to, are not equal. So I think it is clear for all of you. So delta n is the very important factor here. Is delta n is equal to 0 if delta n is equal to 0 then kp is equal to kc if delta n is equal to positive then <coughs> you see this formula then kp is greater than kc if delta n is equal to negative then kp is less than kc so this is the most important part of this chemical equilibrium portions so the value of delta n, what is delta n? Delta n is the number of moles of product minus number of moles of reactant. So we are going, I think it is clear for all of you. Now we are moving to the question number two. The Kp by Kc ratio will be highest in case of, so here what is given the Kp by Kc ratio will be highest in the case of uh, the reactions are given A, B, C and D. So again the same types of uh, questions. So here Kp 
by kc is equal to rt to the power delta n all of you know this kp by kc is equal to rt to the power delta n so the kp by kc ratio will be highest so that this ratio will be highest depending on the value of delta n where the value of delta n is maximum there the kp by kc ratio will be maximum it is clear for all of you this is a simple mathematics if kp by kc ratio uh, all of you know the kp by kc ratio is equal to rt to the power delta n but from it is come you know kp is equal to kc into rt to the power delta n so kp by kc will be rt to the power delta n now we move to the options in question in, in option number a what will be the value of delta n delta n is equal to here 1 and here 1 plus half that means 3 by 2 so 1 minus 3 by 2 is equal to minus 1 by 2 if you see uh, option number b here delta n is equal to 2 minus 2 2 minus 2 is equal to 0 if you see option number c here delta n is equal to 2 minus 1 is equal to 1 and if you see option number d here delta n value will be 4 and here is 2 so 6 minus 7 and 2 7 to uh, 9 and here, here is uh, 6 so 6 minus 9 is equal to minus 3 so if you if you see here the delta n value is different for the four reactions here is minus half here is 0 here is 1 and here is minus 2 so the highest value from the above four values is equal to 1 therefore kp by kc ratio this ratio will be maximum you see the, the question the kp by kp ratio will be highest in the case of where the option number c where the delta n is equal to 1 which is maximum from the uh, given other three examples so i think it is also clear for all of you so i am again repeating you delta n is the very important factor and very important things uh, to to uh, to explain the different different uh, questions of these chapters so if delta n is equal to positive then kp is greater than kc if delta n is equal to negative then kp is less than K kc and if it's equal to zero then kp is equal to kc now we are moving to question number three this is very interesting question also and very simple also k1 k2 and k3 are the equilibrium constant of the following reactions one two and three so this is reaction number one this is reaction number two and this is reaction number three the correct relation from the following is so you see here if you write down here the equilibrium constant k1 for this reaction equilibrium constant is k1 so it will be no2 square by n2 into o2 square so this is k1 the value of k1 and the value of k2 is equal to into into o2 square by n o2 square so it is clear from this reaction 1 and 2 that they are opposite to each other so here the reactant is behaving like uh, behaving product in the second reaction so k1 k2 will be the uh, reciprocal of each other so first one uh, we, have, we have whatever we have seen here k1 is equal to 1 by k2 and for the and the, 
and for the reaction 3 the equilibrium constant k3 is equal to n2 to the power half into o2 divided by no2 so what is k2 k3 i am clearly written here n2 to the power half o2 by no2 so find out the relation between k between k3 and k1 and k2 so in k3 uh, what is in the numerator there is nitrogen and oxygen so here the product is nitrogen and oxygen so it is it will be similar like 2 but the value is different for the concentration value is different what is the difference here if, if you see the relation between k3 and k2 that is we can write it n2 into o2 square by no2 square to the power half so if if, if the power of this will become half so it, it, it will be equal to k3 and this portion the n2 into o2 square by n2 square is equal to what is equal to k2 so here we can write 1 by uh, sorry k2 to the power half that means k3 it becomes is equal to k2 to the power half <coughs> So the uh, uh, whatever we have find out here, k1 is equal to 1 by k2 and k3 is equal to root over k2. Now combining these three, these two equations, you have to find out uh, the proper choice from A, B, C and D. Now you will see here in the first option, k1 is equal to 1 by k2 is equal to 1 by 3. So this is not correct so this is cross if you see here k1 is equal to 1 by k2 this is okay and is equal to 1 by k3 square so if you see here 1 by k3 square means if you see k3 square is equal to k2 so therefore 1 by k2 is equal to 1 by k3 square so this is similar as k3 is equal to root over k2 which is similar to 1 by k2 is equal to 1 by k3 square so you see here k1 is equal to 1 by k2 that is fine and is equal to 1 by k3 square so this is the actual answer for this questions so the proper relations will be k1 is equal to 1 by k2 is equal to 1 by k3 square. I think it is also clear to all of you. So very simple and interesting questions. Uh, now the question number 4. Units of equilibrium constant. Where the students uh, get some mistakes. So they, they thought that the equilibrium constant uh, have the similar units or they don't have any units. But equilibrium constant, Kp, whether it is Kp or Kc, both have the, uh, both may have the uh, um, unit or may not have the unit that depends on the, the, the uh, that depends on the reactions parameter that is the delta n value. Again, we are moving to the delta n value. What is delta n? I am written here. Delta n is equal to number of moles of product minus number of moles of reactant. So, what is the uh, reactions given here? You see, Ni solid in force U has to Ni. CO all for Z. So the equilibrium constant, if you consider the equilibrium constant Kc is equal to 
the concentration of NiCO helper NiCO helper and here the concentration will be CO to the power 4 because nickel is present in solid state so if you if you want to calculate the unit of, of this if you want to find out the unit of this case your equilibrium constant then this is very simple so this is also concentration this is also concentration and so the concentration power in the above in the numerator the concentration power is equal to 1 so i am writing here c to the power 1 where c is concentration and in the below uh, denominator concentration to the power 4 so ultimately it will be it will become c to the power minus 3 so all of you know the concentration of the reactant or the product is given by moles per liter okay so c is equal to moles per liter therefore we can write here moles per liter to the power minus 3 moles per liter to the power minus 3 so this will be the unit of equilibrium constant so here is also it depends on the value of delta n how it is value uh, how it is dependent on the delta n you see here here the delta n value for this reaction is 1 minus 4 is equal to minus 3 so you see so the units of i am learning you in the in the simple manner the units of delta n is depend on sorry the units of k is depend on the delta n value so the power of the, uh, so the value of delta n is determine the equilibrium constant units and which is the same as the value uh, and which, which will be the constant which is the same as the concentration power of the reactant and which is equal to the delta n so you clearly seen here delta n value is equal to minus 3 and whatever we have find out from here the cons the con uh, the units of the k is equal to moles liter to the power minus 3 so this is here is minus 3 here is also minus 3 so the options will be 1 Now we are moving to the question number 5 which is also very simple questions and the basic problems. <coughs> so which one of the following molecules, molecular hydrides act as a Lewis acid. So I am going to clear some things here. So molecular hydrides, what is hydrides? In simple way, when some elements react with hydrogen it will form a compound that compound is called hydride say for examples carbon react with hydrogen they will form ch4 this is the hydride of carbon and oxygen hydride h2o or nitrogen react with hydrogen they will form nh3 so this is the hydride of nitrogen <coughs> and boron boron react with hydrogen it will form bs3 so this is also hydride of boron so what is the hydride when some element react with hydrogen or react with uh, 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 combined with hydrogen to form a compound then the resultant compound is called hydrides so it is basically the elements uh, one elements and hydrogen is present in the corresponding compounds so what is the nature of these hydrides these hydrides may act as a base may act as a Lewis acid, may act as a Lewis base, may act as a neutral compound, also act as a reducing agent. So that that are not those are not concerned for us, but for your interest I have uh, uh, say, say something about hydrides. So now the, now going to the questions, which one of the following molecular hydrides act as a Lewis acid? So what is this Lewis? acid so all of you know 
Lewis acid and Lewis base is the very important topics or very important parts of this uh, chemistry portions. So Lewis acid means the molecules molecules which have the tendency to accept electron electron pair. So the molecule which has the tendency to accept the electron pairs are called Lewis acids. And the molecules those have the tendency to lose the uh, to donate the electron pair is called Lewis base. So we are not bothered about the Lewis base and the, here the question is about the Lewis acid. So to, to act as a Lewis acid the molecule must have to present an hybridized orbital or vacant orbital to accommodate the incoming electrons. So if you see uh, this is very simple questions if you see in, in, in option number <coughs> option A ammonia molecules has a lone pair so already it has electron and does, is, is don't have any vacant P and D orbitals so it cannot act as a Lewis acid it, uh, uh, whether it, it will be acted as a Lewis base so this option is crossed if you see water molecules in the similar way water is also have two lone pairs of electrons so they neither uh, so, so they, they, they will not act as a Lewis acids and if you see is this B2 A6 molecule this is very important molecules B2 A6 which is known as the dimer of boron dimer dimer means two molecules of boron will combine to form B2 dimer of boron what is boron the hydride of boron that is BS3 plus BS3 two molecules of BS3 will combine to form B2A6 this is diborane and here is um, this in the in diborane compound if you see this is the dimer of BS3 so in, in if you closely look in BS3 molecules boron, boron is in sp2 hybridized this is sp2 hybridized so one p orbital is vacant one p orbital is vacant means they can accommodate the electron to this p orbitals and hybridized p orbitals so only the molecules b2a6 uh, will form uh, will, will accept the electron pair from the <coughs> from any other uh, donor so this will be act as a lewis acid so what about the methane molecules in methane molecules all the valencies are satisfied and carbon don't have any vacant d or p orbitals so it will never act as a lewis acid so the option will be correct choice will be b2a6 which is known as diborane so this is very interesting questions now we're moving to the question number six this is also a interesting question which of the following reactions will be uh, will be favored at low pressure it is related to last atelier principle all of you know uh, in chemical equilibrium the last atelier principle is one of the most important principle which is useful in industrial applications and is useful for many other uh, 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 many other reactions to accelerate the reaction to uh, deaccelerate the reaction to uh, um, monitor the reactions this principle is very important so all of you i think all of you know this principle so here the equilibrium constant is depend on some factors those are very important if you disturbs any factors if you disturbs any factor for which the equilibrium is exist then there will be a problem and equilibrium will shift it towards right or left side to manage itself uh, and and to retains its equilibrium again so uh, here the questions given which one which of the following reactions will be favored at low pressure so low pressures so again the which which things comes in operations the delta n value if you see here delta n delta n is equal to 2 here 1 plus 1 2 minus 2 is equal to 0 
here is delta n is equal to 2 minus 3 on is equal to 4 is equal to minus 2 and here delta n is equal to 2 minus 1 is equal to 1 and here delta n is equal to 0 so this is very simple to calculate the delta n value now at low pressure when the equilibrium exists if you decreasing the pressure then system will try to maintain its equilibrium so that in, in uh, so that uh, to to minimize to to minim uh, to minimize the effect of lowering the pressure it will move in direction in that way where the pressure is increases so you see which of the following reactions will be favored at low pressure so pressure is low so in which direction pressure is high the reaction will shift it to this directions so that is depend on the value of delta n where the delta n value is maximum you see that their delta n value is maximum for here is zero here is one here is minus two here is zero so the delta n value is maximum for this reaction reaction c so if you carry out the reaction at low temperature from uh, all of the above uh, a b c and d so which reaction will be favored where the delta n is equal to uh, delta n is uh, maximum so in this case pcl5 the decomposition of pcl5 to pcl3 and cl2 delta n value is equal to 1 and which is the maximum value so the correct options will be option number c but in in, in remaining options if you see here delta n is equal to 0 here delta n is equal to 0 so there will no effect of pressure in these reactions so delta n value is also um, also making helpful uh, to us to explain the behavior of the reactions what about what about the reactions at low pressure or at high pressures so i think it is also clear for a few now we're moving to the question number again i'm writing here delta n is equal to positive or delta n is equal to negative or delta n is equal to zero so these three things are very important i am repeating again 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 so that you can remember it now moving to question number seven this is also very simple and uh, interesting questions you see water is well known amphoteric solvent what is amphoteric solvent the solvent which can act as a both acid as well as base amphoteric it 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 has the acidic as well as the uh, basic behavior water is oil known amphoteric solvent in which chemical reactions water is behaving as a base only only base 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 only base only means water will accept h plus ion to form h3o plus so water is acting as, as a base that means the another element uh, sorry the another another compound which is present as a reactant in in the in the given reactions that should be much more acidic than water so that water can accept the h plus ion from that from from that molecules and behave like a behaving like a base only so you see it is the very simple so in the first options here h2 is super water so it's very strong acid and here water water this is known as self uh, auto ionization uh, this is auto ionization or self ionization here water present with a base this is not a acid nh2 minus and mnh also base. so the options a will be correct options here where water is behaving as a base that means if you see water is accepting 1H plus ion to form H3 plus and H2 is over releasing 1H plus ion will act in, this is strong base and this is uh, acid and this is acting as a base here so the option will be option A this is the correct answer for this reactions now we are moving to the question number 8 this is also uh, the reactions from chemical equilibrium or acid-base equilibrium 
वैल्यूज ऑफ डिसीजन कॉन्स्टेंट के आर एस फॉलोज यू हैव गिवन थ्री एसिड्स एस सी एन एच एफ एंड एच एन टू देर डिसीजन कॉन्स्टेंट ऑल्सो गिवन दिस सिक्स पॉइंट टू इंटू टू माइनस टेन दिस सेवन पॉइंट टू टेन टू माइनस फोर दिस फोर पॉइंट जीरो इंटू टू माइनस फोर सो हट इज डिसीजन कॉन्स्टेंट इफ एच एज एसिड इट विल डिकम्पोज टू एच प्लस एंड ए माइनस सो इफ इज डिसीजन कॉन्स्टेंट के ए देन के ए इज इक्वल टू एच प्लस ए माइनस बाई एच ए सो दिस डिसीजन कॉन्स्टेंट is related to the concentration of h plus n whatever you seen here that k is directly proportional to h plus n so higher the value of k higher is the concentration of acid uh, sorry h plus and higher will be the acidity so what is the question here if you see h n h f and h two both have uh, all the three have k is value In first one, if you see the power is ten to the minus ten, this is very low K value. That means HCN will not dissociate easily. Ten to the minus ten is very low value. With respect to HCN, if you see HF has the much uh, much higher value compared to HCN, and HNO two have value almost half. Of the dissociation constant of K uh, of H. So what is uh, uh, what can what we can conclude here? The highest value of K is for H. F. We have already uh, seen here the value is given, and after that the value of H N two and the lowest value of H C uh, lowest value of K is equal to H N. So lowest value of um, um, HCN is the lowest value of K uh, is for HCN. That means the dissociation constant of HCN is very much low. So that will imply that HCN when decomposed to H plus Cl minus Cn minus ion, so the rea uh, the decomposition rate is very slow. So if you move from left to right. That will not be too much favorable. The ASN ASN will try to remain in this form. That means CN minus ion have the higher tendency to accept H plus ion to form ACN. That means CN minus will accept H plus ion. That means CN minus behaving as a base. So if you see. The correct order of increasing basic strain of the base Cn minus F minus N into minus will be so you see Cn minus here is also Cn minus here is also Cn minus now what what about the F minus N into minus so if you see F minus N into minus into minus has the lower value and F minus has the higher value so into two minus after Cn minus that will be into two and and finally and the least value of Basic property will be for F minus. So the option will be option number C. So uh, F minus has the higher tendency to uh, sorry F minus has the lower tendency to accept the H plus ion among uh, C minus uh, and N two minus, and hence it has the lower basic strength. Now we are moving. to question number 9 that is very important for practical purpose also what is the given here uh, this is the uh, problem of ph calculations equal volumes of the three acid solutions of ph so we have the three acid solution say a b and c their ph value is given ph is 3 and another is 4 another is 5 are mixed in vessels What will be the H plus ion concentration in the mixtures? So equal volumes. So the volumes of A. This is also B one. This is also B one. This is also B one. So the total volume will be total volume will be three B one. Now we have to find out when these A, B, C uh, acids are mixed. 
those pH are 3, 4 and 5. A resultant mixture will be from acidic mixture is found and what will be the pH of that mixture. So we have to apply the formula V1 into S1 is equal to V2 into S2. If we find out the strength of H plus in the mixture then it will be very easy for us to calculate the pH. Now if you see uh, uh, here you see the initial volume and final volume V1 and V2 is the same because same volume of three acids are mixed. So and if we mixed A, B and C if they, if they does not react or they does not form any other compound so the volume remain fixed so the, here v1 is equal to v2 so this what will be the strength so s1 is equal to s2 now s1 the initial strength will be the strength the average strength of concentration of h plus ion so this is clear for question number a uh, sorry for acid a pH is equal to minus log of concentration of H plus, you know, is equal to 3. So, for A, concentration of H plus ion is equal to 10 to the power minus 3. In a similar way, the concentration of H plus ion for B will be 10 to the power minus 4. All are in molar. This is in molar. And concentration of C and the concentration of H plus ion for C will be is equal to 10 to the power minus 5 molar. So now what about the S2? So S2 will be the average of uh, average of the concentration of H plus of A, B and C. So S2 is will equal to 10 to the power minus 3 plus 10 to the power minus 4 plus 10 to the power minus 5 by 3 which will become equal to if you see here take a common 10 to the power minus 3 that is 1 plus 10 to the power minus 4 that means 0 0.1 plus 0 0.01 so in total if you see 10 to the minus 3 into 1.11 so is equal to 11.1 into 10 to the power minus 4 by 3 so which is near about so if you see how 10 to the minus 4 molar 3.37 in 10 to the power minus 4 so this will be near about 3.7 into 10 to the power minus 4 molar so this will be the concentration of H plus so the option number 3 will be the correct answer so again I am repeating here if you mix the same as uh, same volume of acids then their average volume will be equal to the 3 times of the volume of any acids and if you use this formula V1 S1 is equal to V2 S2. This is very important formula for calculating the strength of the uh, any any solutions or percentage of the solutions to prepare any uh, percentage solution to prepare any strength solutions to prepare any normal uh, uh, normal or molar solutions. You have to use this formula to dilute a solutions or to calculate the strength of the solutions. Now we are moving to the Question number 10, which is the last question of today's class. How many liters of water must be added to 1 liter of aqueous solution of HCl with a pH of 1? Create an aqueous solution with pH equal to 2. So initially, we have a solution whose pH is equal to 1. So, you know log of pH is equal to log of concentration of H plus is equal to 1. So concentration of H plus is equal to 10 to the power minus 1 molar. So initially we have uh, added uh, to 1 liter of an aqua solution of HCl with the pH. So its volume is equal to 1 liter and strength is equal to strength is equal to 10 to the power minus 1 molar. 
and what we have to find out how much water have to be added to this solution uh, to this uh, uh, acidic solution to make it pH is equal to 2 so pH is higher higher than 2 so in the final volume in the final solution the concentration of H plus is equal to 10 to the power minus 2 molar so now you can use the most uh, important uh, um, relations over here v1 is equal v1 s1 is equal to v2 into s2 so initially what is the uh, what what is the volume we are given one liter so one and strength is this is one liter and his strength is 10 to the power minus one molar and we have to find out the final volume so this is v2 into s2 is equal to how much its strength will be 10 to the power minus 2. So V2 is equal to how much? 10 to the power minus 1 by 10 to the power minus 2. So it will become um, 10, 10. So it will become uh, V2 is equal to 10 liters. So the final volume will be V2 is equal to 10 liters. So initial volume was V1 is equal to 1 liter. So how much water you have to add it? Just uh, minus it. 10 minus 1 is equal to 9 liters. So the answer will be 9.0 liter. I think this is clear and uh, interest. Uh, this is clear for all of you. Hope all of you are doing well for your upcoming any examinations related to chemistry. So whatever we have discussed today, I am just summarizing it. Uh, I have 10 questions, which is basically from chemical equilibrium or ionic equilibrium and related to pH, Kp, Kc and the strength of the solutions. Uh, so different types of questions and uh, there are different approach. And what is the bottom line of today's class is uh, for the chemical equilibrium, the major things is, uh, the, uh, the important things is the delta and value which is very much important to calculate or to uh, or to explain the behavior of any equilibrium reactions or to calculate KPKC relations, anything else of these chapters. So I think all of you enjoyed your uh, uh, studies. So I'm ending the class today. Thank you all for your kind patience. If you like my uh, classes, please make a comment or give a like and please share um, my channels hope in future i'll uh, do some uh, better classes to give you the better facilities so thank you all